Hello, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, stage is mine. So <laughs> here we go. <clears throat> I'm just going to share my slides with you here. So um, welcome, everybody. And I know it's evening time for you, so I won't keep you for too long um, because I don't want um, to bombard you with too much information. So sorry now, usual technical difficulties. Um, so yeah, um, I'll do a little bit of an overview on Ireland and on Limerick because I am, of course, from the University of Limerick. And I'll go into a little bit on kind of the tuition, the fees, the scholarships. But if anybody has any questions afterwards, please do just pop by the booth or um, send me a message there. And if I don't come back to you today, I will certainly come back to you um, later or once I have the answers. So thanks a million for joining me. Um, I am from the University of Limerick and I myself actually studied at the University of Limerick. So I'm an alumnus of business and French at the university. And during my time there as a student, I studied abroad in France and I did my work placement in France. And then when I was in the university, I was really involved in the students union and lots of clubs and societies. So I can speak from experience saying it's a wonderful place to study. So in terms of just where, you know, where's Ireland in the world? Where is Limerick? So here's our world map and Ireland, as we like to think, is right there in the middle. So on our left hand side, we have North and South America and then we're a gateway to the rest of Europe and the rest of the world. Um, but it's not just us saying that there's lots of multinational companies use Ireland as their European base because we are in a great location for it, but also because we have highly recognized, skilled and capable um, graduates and a workforce here. So why Ireland? Well, because it's safe and friendly and welcoming. Um, we have what we call the Cade Mila Falcha, which is in our own Irish or Gaelic language, which means uh, 100,000 welcomes is how we like to welcome people to our country. So we are the largest English speaking country in the Eurozone. There is only us and Malta. Um, we are known for our high quality education system, which is recognized internationally for being of a very high quality. And as I mentioned, we're globally connected and home to many of the world's top companies, including eight of the top 10 uh, med tech firms, nine of the top 10 tech firms, lots of uh, pharma, software and financial services companies as well. Most of the top 10 have a European base in Ireland. It's a gorgeous country, just one picture there in the background with uh, breathtaking landscapes and stunning coasts, but also lots to discover in the Midlands too and in the towns and cities. And I'll go into it in more detail, but what is important for you guys is that while you're here, you can study uh, part time. And we also have generous stay back visa options for people who want to stay and work in Ireland after they've graduated. So in terms of Limerick, uh, the University of Limerick is marked there on the map. Limerick is Ireland's um, third largest city. There's 100,000 people in the city and then 160,000 or so in the outskirts. Um, but of that, 50% of the population is actually under 35. So it's nice and young and vibrant. Um, and there's, there's a great young feel in general to Limerick, but also to the country. We're a bit like Turkey in that way, that we have a, a young population. But as you can see on the map, Limerick is a great location from which to discover the rest of Ireland. So we are about two hours away from Galway on the west coast. We are two hours away from Cork in the south. And then we are two and a half to three hours away from Dublin. We're very close to Shannon International Airport, which is great if you want to visit London or other European or even American destinations. Um, so far, we don't have any flights to Turkey, unfortunately, but we do run regular buses from the campus to Dublin if, for example, you wanted to travel home. And then just about Limerick City itself. So that's a picture there in the background, but it's a safe and friendly riverside city. And it has a lot of medieval and old culture. There's castles and old walls and towns, but 
Beside that, then there's the modern uh, new galleries, museums. Uh, the marketplace is a big place to go on a Saturday morning. Um, uh, pubs, restaurants and great music venues. So it's, it's got a bit of everything. And what we like to say is that it's a perfect mix of affordability without compromise, meaning that Sure, we're not the capital city, we're not the biggest city, but because of that, it's not as expensive in terms of your living costs and still lots to see and do. Um, outside of the actual city centre, there's a lovely green countryside around Limerick and lots of people take to mountain biking, hiking, um, lots of great trails, fishing, golfing. Um, and there's a lovely riverside walk that actually connects the city centre here in Limerick to the University of Limerick campus. So UL is about five kilometers outside of the city center but is its own uh, community and and city almost i'll show you some pictures now of the campus but just to give you a general feel for it we have a population of seventeen thousand students 3,000 of those are international students. Um, our international society is the biggest one in the university um, and most international students and lots of Irish students are uh, in the society. Um, we are in the top 100 to 150 category of the Times Higher Education Young Universities. Um, unfortunately, well, it's a good thing. We turned 50 this year. It's our 50th birthday, but that means we can't uh, rank in those anymore as of next year. We'll be considered an old university next year. Uh, in terms of employment, UL has great statistics in that 96% of our graduates are either in a job or in further studies um, within six months of graduating from UL. And our most recent accolade is that our Kemi Business School is now in the top 1% of international business schools globally because it is triple accredited. So that's great news for the business school and great news for your CV if you're going to study uh, business with us in Limerick. So um, again, just a glance, that is the campus there in the background. So the River Shannon, the longest river in Ireland, runs through campus. You can see it bottom right. Um, 17,000 students, of which 100 countries are represented in our student body. Um, we've, we've listed how many books we have there, but it is worth noting that our library was redone over the last few years. So it's a big, huge space for students um, with everything from study rooms where you can study together and do group work to, to private, quiet rooms, um, lots of space to just set up with your laptop and, and do your studying. Um, and then also you will see here, so we have eight villages providing accommodation for 3000 students and staff. Uh, top right of the slide there, there is a picture of one of the villages um, and our campus covers 366 acres. So mostly on the Limerick side. But if you cross that little bridge there, you actually end up in technically the next county. So County Clare. Um, it, it's like I mentioned, it's like an American campus in that it's big, it's sprawling. Some students get a bicycle just to go around campus, but it's wonderful because it's got such a community feeling and um, everything you need is on campus or very close by. So just to show you a little bit, these are some of these are actually old pictures. Uh, most of our accommodation has been updated and is even nicer than this now. Um, but of the 3000 spaces, these are a selection of some of the types of rooms. So all of the rooms are private. There's no shared rooms. Um, and then the prices depend on how many people are living in the apartment and whether you have an ensuite or a shared bathroom generally. So all of them would have shared living room and kitchen space. Um, our first years usually go into somewhere with eight students and that way you have seven new friends automatically. Um, and then as people progress, um, our more senior students go for the smaller apartments with uh, the en suites, which are usually a bit quieter and more um, study based. But all of the bedrooms have fitted uh, desk and Wi-Fi connection and all of our villages are very safe with 24 hour security and managers there. For anybody who has applied to UL or is going to apply soon, um, our booking system is open for accommodation now. So we would definitely tell you to apply as soon as you can for a bedroom if you'd like to live on campus. Um, because just in general, in Ireland at the moment, for every university and college, um, we're running out of accommodation space. So um, if you want to guarantee your room, you need to get in there as early as possible. 
And that's just another couple of photos. But what I just kind of wanted to say around this is that one, Limerick is known as um, Ireland's sporting campus because we have a 50 metre swimming pool, the first one in Ireland. Um, we have athletic running tracks indoors and outdoors. We have a diving pool and we have a number of different pitches for all the various different sports. But also UL is known very much for a sense of community because we're in a residential area surrounded by schools and communities. A lot of people use UL um, because it's such a beautiful campus to walk with their children, with their dogs, to meet up with friends for coffee. So there's always a great kind of hum and, and buzz around the campus, which is very nice. In terms of student supports for you guys, when you decide to come over here, we have nurse, doctor, counsellors um, and chaplains on campus um, and access to all of those is, is available to Irish and international students, of course. Once you get your offer letter, we have an app called Campus Connect, which is kind of like um, WhatsApp groups. So you join the groups that are of interest to you, students coming from Europe, students, um, accommodation, uh, visas, and then you can put your questions into these groups and then people like me from the international office get back to you or other students, our student ambassadors do a lot of the answering of questions. So it's just a nice way to be able to ask your questions before you arrive. So you have all of your information before you get here. We do an orientation week, of course, with everybody who arrives with uh, tours, information sessions, um, some table quizzes, some Irish dancing, some Irish music to get you used to our culture. Um, and then every student who comes to UL is involved in the first seven weeks program. So instead of throwing all of the information at you at the end of August, it's spread out over the first seven weeks so that you get a little bit of information on, say, your timetable, then on the library and how to use the systems there. And it's all spread out nicely so that you get a little bit of information at a time. In terms of fun, as I mentioned, the International Society is huge, but we have over 80 clubs and societies. So whether you're sporty and like football or whether you want to try an Irish sport or whether you want to do kayaking, outdoor pursuits or lots of indoors and non-sporty ones too, um, like language societies, culture societies. Um, there used to be a tea appreciation society, but I'm not sure if that's running anymore. But anyway, if you want to look at the UL Wolves, you'll get an idea of the kind of societies that we have. Friday night pre-COVID was always international night on campus. So we're very much hoping that comes back on um, in September. It's just a great way to meet everybody um, and always plenty of Irish students there too. And then we will also assist with volunteering opportunities on and off campus and support with job searching if you're looking for part-time jobs on our student life platform. Now down to the actual courses. I'm just going to take a sip of my tea. So we have four faculties at the University of Limerick, science and engineering, education and health sciences, arts, uh, law and social sciences and business. Now, the best place to find all the information is on our website, because if you look ul.e slash courses, you can look up your specific course and on every page there is an overview. There is what you'll be studying in terms of the modules. There's entry requirements, fees and funding and a section on careers where you can read a few alumni testimonials and see who studied the course before and what kind of a job they've gone into afterwards. Um, but here just gives you a general kind of an overview. Uh, medicine to note is graduate entry. So you do have to already have your bachelor's um, to follow medicine or surgery with us in UL. Um, we offer a foundation program, which I'll go into in a minute, undergraduate and postgraduate both taught, such as master's or um, research like your PhD. So there's, there's something at most levels for people in the University of Limerick. For science and engineering and business, they're set up in a similar way in that they start quite general and you'd have the you know general courses and classes for the first year and a half, then you go into your specialization. 
Um, arts and European studies are something that are very big in the University of Limerick with the longest running European studies program. Um, and arts, you have an option of 16 different modules to study at the start. So lots open to you there if there's um, a number of different courses that you're interested in. So in terms of entry requirements, um, you need your high school diploma, but also you need to do a recognized foundation program to come to UL. So entry into our foundation program requires a score of four out of five. Um, but we will, of course, accept other foundation programs. If you wanted to do it in Dublin or in another um, college, that's no problem at all. Um, and then you would also have to meet our English language requirements. So generally, um, you'll have covered those anyway in the foundation program. But just to give you um, an idea, for most of our courses, the English language requirement is IELTS of 6.5. Um, with no less than six in any of the categories. So I'll go into that a little bit in a minute. Um, but if you're from an international baccalaureate school, you will need six subjects, including a minimum of two at higher level, and you need to be doing English, another language, and maths as three of your subjects. So our International Foundation program, if you wanted to do it with us in the University of Limerick, as I said, uh, requires four out of five. It's a one year full time program, which um, gives international students that option to uh, then join a bachelor's in the University of Limerick. And it's there because your qualifications are just not quite high enough and it boosts then your level of knowledge in our various courses and in your English before you come into the first year of your bachelor's. So the three streams are business, science and engineering or arts, humanities and law. It's €12,000 set fee for the year and that includes a €50 Euro administration fee. But when you're on this, just to note, our English language school is fully on campus. So you are as much a UL student as anybody else. You can be involved in the clubs, the societies, you can live in on-campus accommodation. Um, so it's very much the start of your student experience. And then for our undergraduate programs, when you do join us, um, they are four years in duration at the University of Limerick. This is because we really encourage um, doing a semester abroad to try another university, another country, um, which we call the Erasmus Exchange. And then there's a mandatory uh, semester of working. But the great thing about that is that then when you graduate, you are uh, able to put on your CV that you've been working for six to eight months. You've uh, trained in the skills that you've been learning about and employers recognize this and know that all students coming from UL have done their work placement. So in terms of the setup of the actual undergrad, you'd have larger lectures and then smaller group tutorials and labs, um, both individual and group projects for most of the courses. And all of our courses have links with industry, with many of our professors having come from the industry back into or, or into academia to share their knowledge. Um, scholarships, there are some available that are course specific. So again, it's worth looking at your course that you're interested in on our website and checking the fees and funding tab. And then just a teeny bit more on the work placement because it is such a big sell for us here at UL because UL graduates are highly employable. So every year we have a really big careers fair. You can attend if you're in first, second, third, fourth year. Um, we host it in our sports arena and it's basically done that there's an entire row of companies of law firms, of accountancy firms, of language uh, centers of um, pharma, science, med tech. So you can go around, get ideas on the types of jobs you'd like or on your co-op. Um, but the co-op placement is usually in the end of your second year or the start of your third year of your bachelor's degree. And our careers office helps you put together your CV and to look at what country or what kind of company you'd like to work in. And then they will help to set that up. So over 2000 work placements are organized every year by our careers office. Um, most of those are paid placements um, and just it's 10 euro and 50 cent is the minimum wage here in Ireland at the moment. Um, so it's great because you're paid for the, the six to eight months, but you're also gaining invaluable experience in um, the subject area that you are learning in. 
Um, so we're ranked in the top 200 global universities for employability. And if you'd like to read any graduate testimonials, I've left a link there on that slide. And these slides are also available on the booth. So all of the links are there if there's anything you want to look at afterwards. And these are just um, honestly just a selection of some of the companies that we either do our work placement with or graduate to work with afterwards, um, including a few I've worked for myself. <laughs> um, but the great thing, as I mentioned about Ireland, having so many head offices or European bases for the big pharma and tech companies and software companies, not all of them are in Dublin. There's actually quite a lot based in Limerick and some of them are right beside. There's an industrial park right beside the University of Limerick campus. So it's very handy because those students don't have to go very far at all when they're organizing their work placement. So for those of you who already have your bachelor's and um, who'd be looking to do your postgraduate with us in Ireland, you'll need your bachelor's with an average of three out of four. And again, the English language requirements, just to give an example, we use IELTS as 6.5, but there's lots of them there at that link um, that we also accept. And it is worth noting that because of COVID and we know there's been different restraints, we're also still accepting Duolingo for um, the academic year 2022-23. For anyone who does not have the right level of English or is concerned or would like to brush up on their English, we do also do pre-sessional English language classes at our language centre. So I've put a link in there to the language centre and again, the email address there, and they run summer courses for two weeks, four weeks, eight weeks. If, for example, you don't have enough in one category of your IELTS and just need to brush up on that, the guys at the language centre can help you so that you're ready to go for September. And then, as I mentioned, we have both taught programs and research programs. So all of those are on our website. In terms of PhD, um, it's it, you'd get more information by emailing the specific course director who's listed on the page because they can tell you if it's running or what type of research is being done at the moment or if there's a gap there. Um, and they can give more specific information on the funding as well. So generally our taught master's programs are, are one year and um, there's a few of them that are two, but mostly one year. And that's an intensive one year from September until the following August, broken into three semesters. And your last semester then is either the joint project or um, a thesis that you're doing. So a similar setup to the undergraduate with larger lectures and then smaller group tutorials and labs. Um, our admissions process for both undergraduate and postgraduate is rolling, so you can apply at any time, um, but the cutoff date is the 1st of July. In terms of tuition fees and scholarships, so I've included the list there, which is the full list of all bachelor's programs and master's programs, and um, that's up available on our website. Um, Business and arts and humanities are generally the lower in terms of costs, starting from about 12,000 euro. Um, and that's because there's less involved there in terms of labs and the tutorials and field trips, whereas education and health sciences and the more um, medicine, psychology, science and engineering type courses, they all um, increase in price due to the lab work and the nature of what you're learning. And then scholarships. So the University of Limerick offers a number of partial merit-based scholarships. So for these, you don't have to apply for them separately. Once you have applied to study at the University of Limerick, um, we'll automatically review it. And then if you're eligible, you receive the decision at the same time as your offer letter to the university. Now those, as I say, are only partial. They're only maybe 1500 euro, but it's a chunk off of your payment um, and every little helps. <laughs> um, so there's a link there to other scholarships that we have available at the University of Limerick. And again, always check your course page because there could be a specific European studies scholarship or an engineering specific scholarship. So those will be under the fees and funding tab on your course page. Um, I think it's also important to note it's not a specific University of Limerick scholarship, but there is a government scholarship called the Government of Ireland Scholarship, and it's run by the HEA, the Higher Education Authority. And 
though the closing date for those is the 25th of March um but that is a full scholarship and stipend so absolutely something worth looking into if you're serious about coming to study in Ireland and then the important part when you're finished your studies and you just can't leave Ireland yet because it's so wonderful um well term time while you are here the great news is that you can work for 20 hours per week and then you can work for up to 40 hours during the holiday time so around Christmas break and summer break you do not require a work permit as you're a student um, in order to work in Ireland, you need a PPS number, which is like your social security number. Um, but we help you set that up when you get here um, with your visa and everything. And then in terms of staying back when you don't want to go home, um, for those who've studied their undergraduate here, you can stay for 12 months to work. And then if you've done your postgraduate here, you can stay for 24 months. So... I think that's kind of everything that I want to cover with you guys, because as I said, I don't want to give too much information, but I'd be very happy to do any follow up at the booth. Um, but for anyone who kind of missed a bit of this today or wants to see it again or might have additional questions, we do a monthly future students information webinar. And the next one is actually next Tuesday. It's on 12 p.m. Ireland time. So if I'm not mistaken, that is three o'clock for you guys. And you can sign up there. UL.ie slash global is our international pages. All our all of our information for international students is there. But under our new center, you'll find our events. So we'd love to have you with that. And we actually will also have two alumni at it, um, alumni international students. And it's great because you hear where they've come from, how they've dealt with visas, moving, living abroad, um, finding part-time jobs and what they're working at now. So I know that's something that's really of interest to you guys. So even if you join for that part, the Q&A at the end is always um, very helpful. And then this is my information. So again, I'm at my booth if you want to come and visit University of Limerick. Otherwise, uh, for general queries to our office, please do send them to international. But if it's something Turkey specifically related or European related, I can help out. Um, that's our website there, ul.ie slash global. All your information, again, should be there. And if you want to read some of our student ambassador blogs, I have linked them from the booth, but they're also there too on studyireland.ie. So I've actually been chasing our Turkish students because none of them have put up a testimonial yet, but I have one ready to go um, and he's having a great time here. So I'm excited to share that and hopefully we'll have a few more over the next few weeks as well. So um, I will leave you at that, guys. Oh, all of our uh, social media is there too. Obviously a good place to catch us. Um, I don't have the logo because I'm not cool enough, but uh, we also have TikTok. So you can look up the University of Limerick on TikTok if that's where uh, you enjoy watching your content the most. Um, but otherwise, I will leave you to it. And just to say as well that if anybody's attending any of the events over the next while in um, Istanbul, I will actually be out there in April so I look forward to meeting some of you in person so thank you very much and I will see you at the booth